The following interview was was conducted with Esther Connolly Boonstra, uh, Home Ec Class of 1945 for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, April 30th, 2009 at a residence in West Lafayette. Welcome and good afternoon and thank you. Thank you. And tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. Okay, I was born in Rockford, Ohio, at home, as was my sister. My father was the high school principal there, and we just made a trip there, and they torn the school building down. I was sorry. My mother had been a teacher, and she was one of four girls, and they had nothing but girls. And I'm one of nothing but girls. But anyway, um, we lived in Rockford until, I think I told you in the hall, these two men wanted to start a road construction company. And he decided that he would do that. He was very good at math. Unfortunately, our youngest grandson is. He's in the eighth grade, but he's, he likes math, and he's very good at it. But anyway, Daddy, they did that. He set up the books, and they made money those years. That was, he made the most money then he ever did. Did he, he move, though? From yes, we moved to Ann Arbor. Okay. Uh -huh. I went to Iberville School and then is Taplin. That is that grade school? Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, we, my mother died when I was seven there. My sister's three and a half years older. And after two years, Daddy remarried, and then the Depression was coming. And uh, he knew that they weren't going to build roads, and he was right. They built the road around the stadium in Ann Arbor. Uh, the, maybe not the road that's there now, but the one that w was there at that time. And um, we moved to Indiana on a farm, and my sister and I thought maybe it was the end of the world. Because, you know, it was just so different than anything we had ever known. We went ice skating in the Coliseum in Ann Arbor. And uh, there were a lot of things in Ann Arbor that just weren't on out. What, where across in Indiana did you Near Marion, to? Indiana. Actually, it was a mile from Upland, Indiana. Okay. Very Upland. small. Right. Isn't that where Anderson... Uh, no, it's where um, Taylor. Taylor is. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And it is a good school, really. And everybody always wondered why we didn't go there. Well, at the time that we were living. They didn't dance, they didn't go to movies, they didn't do anything that we thought was fun, you know. It was very... Yeah, tell us a little bit about high school. And you went to high school In high school there, school, there were, there were um, 41 ch kids in my high school. However, it was the first consolidated school in Indiana because Matthews was about five miles away and they combined the schools but everybody stayed right where they were. And the Excuse high, me. Hi. There, okay. That's my husband. <laughs> and I'll, this is Catherine. I'll tell you, the children in, the, in Matthews were not as well educated because the teachers must be tired by the afternoon, I would think. But anyhow, that's where it was. And there were 41 of us in 1941, the two schools. The whole school? Two schools that were combined. Wow. Yeah. We had one, the only foreign language which was given was Latin, and they, nobody speaks that much anymore. And uh, it, it really was, it was okay. I had algebra and geometry, that was all, no, no chemistry. We didn't have a chemistry department. What about physical education? Did you have gym? Yes, we had gym, okay. and uh, we only could play on half court of the basketball. Now, isn't that crazy? The whole court was too, too, uh, exertion for girls. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Well, that, we didn't play basketball much, though. But the thing I remember most, the teacher had said, and she was a small girl and very pretty, and I liked her a lot, but she said at the beginning of this class that she wouldn't pass us if we couldn't stand on our head. I could not stand on my head. My Lord. And finally, she didn't want to fail me, so she let me stand on my head against the wall. <laughs> That's how I did it. Isn't that crazy? That's a new one on me. <laughs> Just crazy. I haven't been on my head since then. <laughs> but anyway, it was kind of a minor high school, I would say, but probably usual for that time. Sure, right. And my Uncle Jay, my father's sister's husband, was the principal. Well, that made it nice. Well, yeah. he was nice, but I don't think he showed favoritism. I don't really. That he was a professional. Yeah, he was. And when my sister Catherine, years later, started school, then they let married teachers teach, and his wife had gone back to teaching, and uh, she was Aunt Cora. Even in high school, the, uh, the teacher could not be married? That were no, oh. nobody could. Uh, not a woman teacher could not be married. But now at this time that I'm speaking of, they could. And Aunt Cora had three sons, and they were off and gone, and they needed teachers, and she taught third grade. And when my sister Catherine, I'm thinking of you, when it was to be in that class, she went in and she said, well, am I going to call you Mrs. Pugh or are you, am I going to call you Aunt, Cat, Aunt Cora? 
And she said, you don't know my Aunt Cora, but she said, oh, honey, I will always be your Aunt Cora. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they wouldn't get away with that now either, I don't believe. But, yes, yeah, many things you have to put in that perspective, and it's fine, you know. Yeah. Right, exactly. Well, she wanted to make, make her feel welcome. Yeah. I know, right. Yeah. Then how did you happen to decide to come to Purdue? Then I had eight When years. did you graduate from high school? I graduated year? in 1941. Okay. Was and that, that was before, that would have been before the war started? Yes, yes. We graduated in Maytag Gymnasium at Taylor University. We had no big gym at all. So Taylor University was even <coughs> established at that time? Oh, my, yes. It was oh. old. Yeah. No it's idea. a good school, it really is. It was yeah. very narrow, I would say, when, when we were there. They didn't believe in dancing or movies or anything. And I didn't consider going there. But it is a good school, yeah. Sure. And they don't have quite such stringent requirements. But anyway, I had eight years of 4-H, and I had been at Purdue in a de home demonstration contest in the old Fowler Hall and, and different things. So it wasn't strange to me, and I just never considered any place else, really. And I did get a scholarship my first year for, through the 4-H. Did you come down beforehand to take a look at the campus? Before? Well, no, I had been there, you know, for Oh, you had so no, already seen really. it. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little about registration. Registration was everybody in the same old building. In the armory. In the armory. And it was wild, absolutely wild, even though there weren't nearly as many kids. It would be impossible now. But it was, it was wild. And, and they had kind of people that helped steer you through, or you'd be there yet, I think. And then that's what the Green Guard was for, formed partly for. The Green Guard was a group of girls, and we helped people through that and other things, the freshmen. Did uh, you pull out some cards? If you picked, how did you pick courses that you were going to? Was somebody there to help you? What you, courses you know, did I, take? I, you no, I don't know how that was really. You just kind of. I was going to be a home economist. I was going to have home ec, and my minors for teaching or my two two fields were home economics and art. I was an art minor, and I guess they just kind of took care of you. Went from there. Okay. I don't remember really yeah. having trouble. Did we take a sort of a? Um, Questionnaire. Did we fill out questionnaires when they first came and they assigned us classes according to our school, college or school? Then, no, if uh, they did, I do not remember that. I really don't. I don't remember signing up in advance for. Well, I don't think I did. Mm -hmm. of, uh, well, I was in second level uh, English, for example. Yeah. Well, I wasn't in the non credit. My roommate was, but I, I wasn't in that. But no, I wasn't anything special. Where did you live? Tell us about residence hall. Where did you I live? I lived in what they called South Hall. I think it's Sheely now, maybe. Oh, okay. It was north and south, was this way, you know. And they used to uh, serenade the girls when they got pinned. The fellows would come in that place in the middle and serenade us. And we'd all go in the bathroom, because that was the only window that opened out there, and listen to them sing. Kind of dumb. <laughs> But anyway, uh, okay. and then my, the, uh, the next year I lived in Woodhall. Okay, which is close to there. Yeah, it, right. it's, it's all kind of a condo. There's quite yeah, a few right in the here, right here. Right. And um, <clears throat> I was in Purdue only three years, never took a final. But we, we, uh, I was only there three years, and yet I didn't graduate until 45 because the first summer after college, I was a, taught archery at a campfire girls camp in be, Michigan. This would be 1944 then? No, this... 43 maybe? No, it was right after 1941. It would be 42. Oh, okay. My first year after freshman year. And I had um, I taught that, and I, I liked it. It was fine. But I came home with a terrible strep throat, and I really almost died. My, my second mother, who was an RN, um, told my sister I might die because she, she, we were quite close. And they had penicillin, but nobody could get it but the serviceman. So all they did was paint my throat with thiolate. And I didn't die, but I don't know one week at all. And uh, so they wouldn't let me go back to Purdue then, the next semester, and I thought the world would quit, but it didn't. And so I, I, it looks like I was in school for years. I really wasn't. Okay, okay. But, what uh, was campus like? Tell us a little about that. And well, also was, about the choir and things that you were Yeah, well, I was going to tell you about the, okay. the Curtis Wright girls you wanted yes, to know. That, yeah. Well, the Curtis Wright and RCA girls came from all different campuses t for a uh, project for the war, the science, I'm sure. And they were nice kids, different than we were, of course. A lot of Did them were they, from Texas. Did live in your dorm? Well, we moved out. We had to get out. They had the whole dorm. Oh, wow. Yeah, Wood Hall was all that. And a bunch of us moved out to um, an old house right behind the old Triangle House. There were 18 of us. 
We called it Mama J's. Mrs. Johnson had them. And she gave us our dinner the first year, and then she got tired and didn't, but we didn't care because we could go to home at her. You know, that wasn't important. But um, they, they took over, the girls did, and they were all quite bright, I'm sure, they wouldn't have gotten in the program. And they came from other states, too. Texas, a lot of them were Did from, they? I remember. Okay. I don't How long know. was that program? Would they be here for? Four? Not? I don't know. A year or two. I, I've read up something. I know on Arrow they have something on their webpage, and it, to, to me it sticks in my mind. Approximately 18 months. It could have been that 12 could, to 18 months. Yeah, that's there, probably but, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. But anyhow, they were nice girls, and they but different. And, you know, they came from a different part of the sure. country. They were all, all new to us, and we were probably just as different to them. Yeah. What about, tu you were talking about tuition, and there wasn't any tuition. Tuition was $54 a semester. But what, what's the difference between tuition and fees? Were there fees? No. Well? And our passport, oh. our picture with our little thing that we got when we registered, it took us to all the football games. Wasn't it all the programs at the music hall, honey? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. There were a few exceptions. That was your ID card, right? Yeah, it was ID, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was worth quite a bit when you thought, think about it now. $54? $54. That's why that brother-in-law came here. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember that. I know the boy that was checking in at chemistry by me was from Indianapolis, I think Short Ridge, and he knew all about it. I didn't know anything but a test tube and a, you know, I knew about two, th I'm not kidding, I didn't know anything about chemistry, and I, he helped me check in or I might be there yet. But I know he thought I was an idiot. No. Well, I bet he did because, you know, it was just so common for him. He had so had chemistry. Had, had chemistry and you hadn't had it. I never had been in a lab even, in a chemistry lab. Mm. You had chemistry in high school? Um, yeah, I wasn't so good at it, but I was just reading about Amelia Earhart and how she was choosing her high school. She moved halfway through, and that's how she chose, by, by their chemistry facilities. Is she that said, right? If they don't have a chemistry sink, she's not going there. Is so that right? I didn't know that. It's interesting how chemistry is a determinant of a good school, you know? Yeah, well, for what she wanted, that was right. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk a little bit about the, the choir. and uh, Yeah, well, the University actor. Choir, right. where Al Stewart directed it, which he always had. And uh, Chuck was in it, too. That's where I met him. But um, you had to try out, sing just for him. What, I mean. what kind of person was Al Stewart? Oh, he was really nice and very common. His wife was lovely, too, and they had parties at a while, one or two that I remember, at their house. And I remember I fed one of their little girls at her supper because they had two little girls, almost babies, not tiny babies. And uh, I, I've seen that same child now as an adult, <laughs> and I remember that. She probably <laughs> would just soon forget it. But anyway, um, he was real nice, very congenial. So there was the, uh, they're both male and female in the choir? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and then there was the concert choir. What was that? That was formed um, after we'd been there, a little, been in school a little bit, and he chose, um, you remember how the concert choir was chosen? It was the better singers. I think it was the better singers out of the glee club and the, and the, and con the choir. And the regular choir, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there, was, there was no women's chorus at that time. No, none. No for duets. No. no, they were formed. The they were formed about our second year or so, or third. And there was twelve girls, and they were taken from the concert choir. They were the okay. be better voices. Where were the concert choir? Would they give special concerts during the year? Was that was that what the name meant? Is that what because? Well, it's what it means now, and I don't oh. really know that they did a lot, lot of special concerts. Okay. It was war, and you know they didn't sure. go any place to. Right. And Elliot, Elliot Hall of Music had just been completed when you came. Correct. It was the first. We were the first ones to use it. And I think I said in this, maybe, the, the person that was leading us said, look to your right, look to your left, and remember one of you will be here at the end of the year. Now that was very encouraging, but that's what he said. When I read that, I thought, wow. <laughs> yeah, poor psychology, I'd say. But it may have been true, I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting comment. That, that President Elliot, you know, said that. But Elliot Hall of Music had already had its opening probably by the time you yeah, came here. Yeah, it was open, but it was, right. I think we were the first groups that were probably right. more in yeah. it. And then uh, there was an orchestra? Yes, okay. Purdue had an orchestra. Chuck was in that. He played viola. Okay. And that was uh, Reagan. What was Reagan's first name? Joseph? Joseph, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And you, you met your husband here? How yes, you, I did. You, I met my husband where the, the uh, wooden or, um, brick apartment houses are beyond the stadium, kind of the side. That was a little woods, not thick, but it was a woods. And we had, you go on? Yeah. They had a uh, 
It sounds so infantile, I know, to you. It probably does. Sounds that way to me, too. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. We'll put you on the list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we had a, a meeting people, you know, get together there. Sure. I, I suppose we had food, too. I don't honestly remember. But anyway, they had a paper, and they had different things on it. The girl that um, had blue eyes or green eyes or something, you know, all different things. And then they had the one that said, the girl that reminds me of my mother. And and he kept coming back to have me sign about four times. And he had me sign that one, and I have laughed about that the rest of my life. His mother was not a very big woman. She had brown eyes, and she was a gentle person, and she was about as different as I am. Wonderful, really, so nice, but she wasn't like I was. But he won my name, I guess, four times. <laughs> and then when the, the first day we had, really, was when Lord Halifax came. And all those speakers that came from outside were free. We never paid. But I went. A lot of kids didn't. But he had had... Did you know who he was? We were, we were told his name. We oh, didn't okay. know much about him. He okay. was from England and was right. a, Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I, I okay. recognize it. Had a handoff, did he not? I think. Something had happened, yeah. Yeah, right. I think. Anyway, we heard him, and I went with my roommate... And we were sitting in the music hall and had heard the program. And when it was over, he kept he came up the aisle and he said, would you girls like to go to the Union and get a Coke? And I don't know to this day, my roommate was an excellent student. And I think Where she, was she from? She was from a farm in uh, Tipton, Indiana, uh, in the country. And uh, she had three older brothers and three younger brothers. And she could not understand how ignorant I was about boys. I knew nothing about boys. Nothing. I didn't. Nothing. She was right in the middle, then, right? She was in the middle. She knew all about little boys. And the big ones, too. Yeah, probably. But the I mean, older and the younger. Yeah, she was a very good student. And she was in textile chemistry. And then I became, I think I told you, the yeah, dean of all economics. Yeah. And uh, had a disastrous marriage. She, she married a schizophrenic, but they had one darling son. And he's okay. But um, the, the doctors finally told her to take Alan and Fleet. That was their words. They were afraid he might kill him, I guess. And so she did. And that's when she went to Illinois, I think. Mm. And that she has never remarried. Okay. But, uh, well, she played in the orchestra, and so did <coughs> Chuck. Okay. And what, what did your husband major in? He was, he's a pre-doctor, pre, pre, um, pre-med? Yeah. Okay, pre-med. Now let's see some campus changes after the war started. December 7th, like the draft and accelerated semesters and no finals? No finals. Well, we saw a lot of different uniforms, and the ones that kind of got my goat, and it was just ridiculous, I suppose. We went, when you go through the Union, there were a lot of these rather short, uh, dark-skinned, not Negro, but dark-skinned people came from South America, and they were in the service. They were in uniform. I'm not sure what they did, but I'm sure it was something about chemistry and all that. But they would really look you over, and it was kind of uncomfortable, I thought. But They sort of stand around, right, and take a look? Well, they yeah. walked a lot. They never saw them standing particularly. Maybe they hadn't seen that building before. I don't know. But <laughs> I think, might I think they were housed in the Union oh, okay. at that time. I really think they were. Was there, more, was there housing in the Union at that time? Not that I know of, oh, okay. unless it would be something like that. Okay. Not okay. that I know of. I can't say The that. Union Club didn't exist at that time, probably. Well, there, yes? was, there was a hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah we were there in our honeymoon, Chuck and I. Oh, okay. And the union, what's the union known as the Union Club today? There. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it did exist. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was there. I'm okay. old, but not that old. <laughs> well, the reason we went there to explain that he he had to to um, get. Did you graduate papers. in the same cl- year? Um, you and your husband. I can't remember. I don't. I really don't remember. Okay. Did you get engaged before you uh, before you graduated? Mm. Or afterwards? I think afterwards. Okay, okay. I believe. But anyway, um, he he was in IU and had to... Com- it's a medical school. Yeah, but you had to get leave papers. He was also in the Navy for quite a few years. He was in the Navy. Before he came to Purdue? No, right. from Purdue. Oh, he went into... The, he, had to, he, got, he got drafted? Well, I don't know whether they were drafted. I think he signed up. Oh, okay. I think that's the way it was. And uh, but So he had to, had to be there. So we were married here on Saturday night. We stayed at the Union that night, and Sunday we had to go to, back to uh, Indianapolis and get his leave papers because they didn't issue them except certain times. And uh, I, I told some young kids, you probably will be, agree with them, that our uh, 
a lot of the people weren't at our rehearsal that, that were in the wedding party even because all the men were in the service someplace, most all of them, and the girls got there. But the kids think, you aren't really married, you know. You, and Chuck wasn't at rehearsal. He took final exams for his freshman year at, at the Bloomington until noon that day, it was a Saturday, and then he hitchhiked home, and they can't believe that either, but they always picked up servicemen. My daddy always picked up men, before that even, because he had been raised poor, and he knew what it was if you didn't have a car. Daddy never passed up a person hitchhiking. So wonder he wasn't killed later, probably. But anyhow, they they and he got home. I don't know. In plenty of time, we had we we got, we got married. married. Yeah. <laughs> the time for the ceremony. But right? the kids can't believe that, you know. But anyway, it happened. And um, what was I talking about? Now? Then when, when afterwards, then what did you do well, after you got married? Then he had to get those papers and they went back oh, to school. Oh yeah, then we took the train back to, to Chicago and we stayed at the Stevens, which is a nice hotel. Sure. And it was $5 a night, which you can't believe and we can't either now, but it was. And we were poor, we didn't have much money at all. That's an old, that's an old, older hotel, it's been around for a long time. Yeah, but it's been updated. Sure. It was a nice hotel, really, sure. it was very nice. And we didn't have any meat on our honeymoon at all. Meat was rationed. We had spaghetti and I don't remember what they made it from. But it was very strange. And finally we gave, got back to um, Indianapolis one night and we were having dinner that night at um, oh, that hotel that was on the point in Indianapolis. I forget the name of it. I do too, but anyway, the, uh, the waiter spilled a whole pitcher of water right in my lap. Didn't matter, it didn't hurt anything, but it would have been the same if it had. And he didn't even act like he was very sorry. I suppose he knew we were poor and he wasn't going to get it much of a tip. I don't know what else. <laughs> it was just crazy. It was a different world. It yeah. really was. Let me ask you this back to the campus. How did it, it change? Because there were more more females or than the... Uh, yeah, there were when, four men for every every girl when I came to Purdue. Okay. But then it got the influx of the, the uh, military were here too. Yeah, but they didn't really in mingle with us much. Not a whole lot. But a lot of the... the um, Male people probably got drafted and had to leave yeah, school. Yeah, right. Yeah. So therefore, it was that's how the four to one is that what they're saying? Well, I think it was that way when we came. Okay. Yeah, before the war was declared. Okay. And I dated a, a nice guy from the east, uh, who was in an army suit, and we liked to dance together. He was he was really a nice boy. He was one of four boys, and I was one of four girls. And my name was Conley, which is Irish and normally Catholic. We aren't we Methodists from day one which doesn't matter except that's the way it was and I really think he thought I was probably Catholic he was a very nice but some way in the conversation it came out I was Methodist he never asked me again but he was he was sent away shortly after that this wasn't going to go any place yeah. anyway um, I mentioned a moment ago what was the accelerated semester I'm thinking of a researcher might want to know the accelerated they speed, speed, sped up the semesters yeah. Because of the war, is that what you... Yeah. Oh, so you had to go, and I think you reported on that. You went in the summers as well? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. So the people can graduate early, is that it? So yeah. you went... We went through as fast as, they can, as you could do it. Oh. And they had, do they have uh, graduations, commencement? Oh, yes, every, t every graduation. There were seven graduations the year I graduated. Seven? Seven. Four. Have never done it before, and they've never done it since. How, what, ti what time of the year did they have them? Whenever a group finished, <laughs> I, I can't honestly remember. But during one particular year, there were seven. Mm -hmm. Wow. That one year when I when I graduated. Right, okay. And uh, I graduated in something of 45 April, I suppose it was. I can't remember. I should have graduated if I hadn't been sick and out. It was, should have been 44. Okay. But um, I think it was 45. They had seven. Where were your classes? In what's known as Matthews Hall? Was that where the home ec classes were? A lot of home ec classes were there, yes. And... Um, all the women teachers were lovely, but they were all single, every one of them. No, no women married? They wouldn't allow it. Were there, did you have any male teachers? No, I don't think I ever okay. did. Uh -huh. I don't think so. Okay. And then were there any other classes, any other buildings that... Uh, yeah, I, I had a lot of classes in the AD building. We called it Applied Design. It was a small, real old building right behind the old home ec building. Okay. It's torn down now. But it was um, it was applied design. It was art, and I was an art minor, so I, I right. did a lot of things in there. And then in the basement was the uh, 
nursery school. I was going to ask you about that because well, there are pictures in the Amelia Earhart collection. She visited the nursery. They had the play equipment outside and shows she visited. And of course, you had the train on campus too. The, yeah, I didn't yeah. see that much, so yeah. no, no, really. But the tracks were there, and the train would come yeah. through to deliver the coal over to the power plant, which was over where yeah, Miss right. Enid, which has now been torn down. Yeah. yeah. Then did, uh, you stayed with you and your husband lived in Indianapolis while he was in um, school. In yes, school. we were li we lived there one year. We were married at the end of his junior year, and I taught school in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. I taught at one of the school eighty one or something like that. I can't remember. And uh, I had seven hundred fifty children a week in art, first grade through eighth grade. I had the first four groups uh, in their room once a week. And then the fifth and sixth I had twice a week in their room, I believe, too, I almost forget. And then I had the high school kids more often in the, in the art room. Okay. It was really quite an experience. I bet. And I was there only a little while when the, uh, one of the teachers told me that the teacher that had preceded me had had a nervous breakdown, and I could begin to understand that. <laughs> but it was an interesting year because I had a lot of children, but they were good kids. They really didn't co they didn't cause any bother. And I had one boy that was big. He was probably a genius. I wish I could have kept track of him. I really would like to know what happened to him. But he was a nice boy, real brown eyes. But he was big, and he could not keep his feet under the seat. They wouldn't fit. They were out in the aisle, but he didn't cause any trouble. And he could draw anything or, you know, do what you're asking. He really had a knack for it. When he wanted to. If he didn't, he didn't cause any trouble. He was just there. And one little girl had an epileptic convulsion in the room one day, and I was about helpless. I had never seen one. I didn't know what to do. They had no problem. Several of them went to her and took care of her. She'd done it before. They knew what to do, and what was I glad. That's right. But anyway, this boy was a musician, too. And the principal was a large woman and, and really nice. And she was very wise, I think, because she let him give a piano program for the, all the children in the school, it was one through eight, about once a month. And I think that was wonderful, yeah, really. She realized for him that. and it was for the children, right. too. You're right. She recognized that yeah. talent and she capitalized on it. Yeah, I wish I could remember his name because he was, he was probably going to make something of himself, yeah. but I don't remember his name with 750 kids. I didn't. Let's go back to campus just for a minute. The Michael Golden Shops, yes. uh, you, you had some, you took some wiring courses over there. Yeah, we, we uh, one group of us, I have pictures, I have my scrapbook, I'll bring it over for you. Um, oh, sorry, you can have to Okay. okay. The, um, you know, the boys weren't here to use that, so they, they let a home ec group, group of girls go, and we had a little bit of wiring, which I don't remember. We had, uh, a little bit of everything over there, and he was so nice. The teacher was such a nice man, and we made cook. I made my cookie cutters. We used a, a, a lathe, and I did some plates, brass one and uh, aluminum, and uh, oh, a lot of things. They, our picture was in the Indianapolis Star. <laughs> some of my real good friends took the same course too. Oh, that's pretty. And cool. that that is really unique, I think because I don't believe that's ever been done before or since, right. never. Right. They wouldn't take time with some yeah. that, that minor. The practice house, were you involved, or did you yeah. stay in one of those? Yes, I did. Okay. And that was Naomi McElwain, was a, a black girl. Everybody liked her. And her daddy was a principal of the Lincoln School over in Lafayette. The school building's still standing, although it looks awful. But anyhow, <coughs> she couldn't live on the west side. <coughs> and so, she was a student at Purdue. Yeah. But you couldn't live in the residence halls? No. Hmm. Strange. Qu crazy. But anyhow, she used to go to practice house. Well, there were supposed to be six girls. So there's six duties, and you go six weeks. Each one has a, a do one of the household duties for a week. Well, they didn't think anybody wanted a room with, with Naomi. And so they only sent five. It bollocked up the whole, whole system, you know. I don't remember, but they worked that out. But of course, she didn't room alone. We all liked her. And she had a roommate, and one of the white girls lived alone. Isn't that sensible? Hmm. Yeah. That was nowhere. The, for the researchers, I'm thinking, the practice house, what was the purpose? What was the experience that you were supposed to gain from that? How to run a home with okay. all the, we had, you know, you were a cook one week, and you were a cleaner one week, and you know, all the different things. Okay, and you had, was there a teacher that would oh, stay yeah, in the yeah, house? Oh, there's a woman that stayed in the house. And the one I cannot remember her name, maybe shouldn't mention it if I do, 
<coughs> she had been engaged to a professor at Purdue, and uh, it was the engagement was bro broken. I think he broke it, and she never remarried. But she was kind of sour. Everybody thought, but she was real nice to us girls. Well, we had to have one guest meal while we were there, and uh, I said, "Well, I'm going to invite Chuck." I was going with him. And the girl said, well, you better not. She doesn't like men. I said, well, too bad, because I'm having him anyway. And I did. And she was as nice as could be, but nobody had ever had a male guest for the guest meal that we had to have. And well, then, you were good for you. you well, know. yeah, it was crazy. She was Does nice. that mean if you couldn't even invite your brother? <laughs> yeah, I didn't to. have a brother, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that was crazy. That sure was. She really got soured on that. <laughs> well, people thought she did. I don't yes, know. But she really didn't. I don't yeah, she think she just went out front. Yeah. yeah. The, um, she should have left Purdue and gone another place, I think. Yeah. The social events, talk a little bit more about that. All the dances in the union, the big bands. Yeah. And the sweet shop, Pappy's. Yes. All right. Sweet you shop. Know, you, have you visited since they've redone it? Yeah. It looks really nice. Yeah, nice, but it's not the old sweet shop, of course. No. Well, Chuck was unusual in many ways. But he was the first and only boy that asked me to go. After Lord Halifax talked, he said, let's go to the Union. The boys always said, you want a coat? They always did. And he said, you want a lemonade? He, he was the only guy that ever said anything different than a Coke. Good for him. Yeah, it was a little Try different. iced tea. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we even drank much of that at that time. I don't know. Oh. Oh, you know, just little things like that. that sure. I remember. The uh, Purdue Independent Association, uh, researchers probably, they see hear about that. What was that? It was quite a strong group, the ones that didn't well, have who, time who, or didn't. The membership was who? Whoever didn't join a fraternity and wanted to join. I didn't join it. Okay. I didn't have time to join much. Were you in a sorority? No, I was not. never okay. went through Rush, no. But the in, So the independents were those who, who did, had not gone Greek. Yes, right, hmm. and wanted to be organized. Did they have the co-op, were the co-ops houses here at that time? Uh, I think they were, yeah. They okay. had, Shoemaker, wasn't that one of them? Yes, that's one of them. Still so, here. So, still here. <coughs> yeah, I had friends that lived in Shoemaker. Um, financial aid scholarships, what was the, were there many, many of that? I don't know, I don't about? know much about that. It was $54 a semester, and I know we had postal savings. So you said you got a, a scholarship. Well, yeah, you? that was through 4-H work. Though. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Um, then the campus, of course, changed, and you talked about that. Um, Smith Hall, was that here when you were here? Yeah, we could get an ice cream cone for a nickel, and we did. And they still did that when I first came in 1968, and I had I was blown away when I said, we're going over there in the afternoon, and that was still the price. Yeah. And you could get cheese and things there. Being a land-grant institution, that's the reason. That yeah, I don't know about the cheese. I never got any of that. I got some of the cheese there, too. Yeah, I, I expect that. But that was a, they, it's been now it was discontinued. Yeah. yeah, it was a long gone, though, yeah. yeah. After graduation and your husband finished medical school, what came next? Tell us a little bit about your Well, after, after graduation, that. I taught school at New Carolina, right. Indiana for Until a year. Until he finished medical Until he finished. Okay. And then we got an apartment in uh, Indianapolis while he had his last year. And he was gone a lot, and it was had Did great. Did you have any children by that time? No, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> on purpose. Uh, we had they had great big windows, and they were low, and there were no locks. So the first time Chuck's parents visited, his father. They were low windows, almost to the floor, huh? Yeah, almost to the floor. It was an old house. We had just part of it downstairs, and, and it wasn't in a very good neighborhood. There'd been a murder up the next block the, the week before we moved. I felt real good about that. But anyway. Um, Where was your husband? Where was he born and raised? He was raised here. He went to Klondike. He was here, okay. So he's <coughs> out in the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And I've told kids that. And Klondike uh, does not have a high school now. And they couldn't figure out, they looked very, very skeptical how he got to be in medical school. And he never went to high school, <laughs> but he did. He, they had a high school. Sure. But anyway. Um, his father drove great big penny nails. Do you know what a penny nail is? It's a great big nail. I think that's the biggest nail. That it, yeah, it's a great big nail. And he drove those in all the windows so that they would brace enough I wouldn't suffocate. Oh. But nobody could crawl in. Mm -hmm. And then I slept a little better. Mm -hmm. But I didn't sleep very well until then, really. Mm -hmm. It was not a good part of town. Mm -hmm. And it's terrible now, I guess. I've, I've been by, not there. Okay. But uh, anyway, he, and he was on duty. Um, 
well, at least every other night. He, he was gone a lot. And then uh, when he graduated, we did that, got that over, and his mother and his aunt, who had not married, in fact, this is her ring, one that she gave me, um, got an apartment for us in Lafayette because he was going to intern at St. Elizabeth's. We had no car still. The kids can't believe that, but we didn't. A lot of people didn't. Well, we didn't have the money was the reason, partly, well, mainly. But uh, they rented an apartment and uh, told me where certain things were. And it was a block and a half or two blocks from St. E's, and that's where he was going to be a resident. And uh, I said, well, where's the kitchen sink? Well, they couldn't think. And then I said, well, where's, uh, where's the refrigerator? And they couldn't think of that either. Well, the reason was there was no kitchen sink, and there was no refrigerator. It, had, it was, had been a closet in one of the upstairs bedroom in Ethbaugh's mother's house. She had, they had two apartments upstairs. She was a lovely person, really. And you shared the bathroom at the very back of the house. And uh, a nice older old woman, really, she was old, had the other apartment. But when we got there, I found out those things. And his folks had an old ice box, and I mean an ice box. Have you ever seen one? You know, I don't. I bet you haven't. Well, I remember one we had when I was very small. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, they had one in their well house, they called it. It was a nice building, but it was full of junk. And they had had one and they, when they got an electric one, you know. So we used that and I had ice. And I only let the pan run over one time, and I felt terrible about it. I really did. Yeah, they broke ice. And oh. here, and then your food was below it. Oh, okay, yeah, I used that. Did you? Mm -hmm. And uh, the ice man had to bring them up, bring it upstairs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we had a son that year, and then we met to. We had Michael that year, and uh, I went to hospital. What about the ki the kitchen then? What did you do for cooking? Oh, I had to get all the water in this bathroom, clear down the hall, oh. and bring it up here and oh. use it, and then take dish water and everything back down. Oh, it was fun. Oh, I bet. Well, it didn't hurt me any. It really didn't, but it was it's on the different. Cut, it's on different. the cutting edge. <laughs> yeah, it was different, very different. And I sure hoped I wouldn't have to live the rest of my life that way, and I didn't. But anyway, um, Michael came that year, and I had gone in uh, uh, at a certain time. I don't know what it was, anyhow. And he decided not to come then. Chuck didn't want to leave me home alone because he was on, on call at St. E's. And so I went in, nothing happened. So the next morning I walked home. And my, my landlady nearly fell over. She couldn't, she just didn't believe it, you know. And you then walked he, home from the hospital? Yeah, well, nothing was going on, so why not? And uh, so then he came, I think, about a week or two later. <laughs> I bet the expression on that woman's face was priceless. No, really, it really bothered her, because she thought she was seeing a ghost, I think. <laughs> I, knew, I knew her, and she was, did you I'm know sure. Esbaugh? He worked for Purdue. In fact, he did those pictures over there. I recognize the, the name. Yeah. 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 No, he was very well known, and she was a lovely lady. had had a daughter that was a school teacher, unmarried. And uh, but anyhow, I walked home, and then Michael came later, a week or so. Yeah. And then what, after he finished his residency, then what what came next? Then we were sent to Great Lakes, and he went to kind of see the lay of the land and all. And Michael and I stayed there. And I think Stay he here in Indiana in uh, Lafayette. Yeah, yeah, at Mrs. Baugh's. And I think he took the train up there. And um, then he rented a, uh, the upstairs of a house there, uh, not too far from where he was going to be working. Yeah. yeah. And um, the war, of course, was over, so this was afterwards. The war. Well, let's see. The war was over in 45. Yeah, it must have been over. Yeah, sure. I hadn't thought about that. Right. Things were not right yet, though. No. So, yeah. To well, the next stage or whatever. Yeah, well, we had a bathroom and we had a bedroom, period. And then we could share the kitchen with her. And she was very nice. She worked in a um, cookie factory in there. And she would bring bags like this of cookies that were broken. You know, they were going to throw them away. I ate cookies. So I ate a lot of them. <laughs> but anyway, um, she was nice. It worked out. Sure. And uh, people can't believe that either. We still didn't have a car. We didn't have a car when Michael was nine and a half months old, and then it was a lemon, because it was third or fourth hand, you know, it was all you could get. But anyway, uh, then, then he was sent to Washington, D.C., 
to the National Naval Hospital. Was he in the, still in the Navy? Or yes, he was, or? No, he was in the Navy for oh. several years. Oh, okay. Had to be, I think. And um, so we, we lived there in an apartment upstairs in an old house, hundred and some years old, out in Rockville, Maryland, and shared the bath with another couple that had a little baby girl. And that was no problem at all. But anyhow, he was not home much. And uh, we wa I walked a lot. I always w took my kids for rides outside. Did you have more? And you had another child by that time? No, it's Michael. Michael. Okay. And he was fat. He was very. He weighed fourteen pounds. I mean, forty pounds when he was uh, nine months old, I believe it was. Oh, wow. And Chuck's grandmother, who was a little tiny German woman, so sweet, real brown eyes, just darling. But she's, she was holding him while his folks were loading us in the car to go up to Zion, Illinois, for this. And uh, she said, this baby is too fat, and nearly broke my heart. Mm -hmm. I thought he was perfect, but he was too fat. And uh, we were feeding him up just what they told us. It was carnation milk formula, and that's like cream. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't do that now, but he was too heavy. But anyhow, he made it through and learned to walk finally and so on. And then after that, we were in Rockville for a year, I think. And then, uh, uh, I don't think there's anything from the Navy that sparked it, but we, we wanted a different place to live, I guess. And we went to Riverdale. And we had our own whole little apartment built on the side of a minister's home. It was new, though, fairly new. And uh, so we lived there. And again, he had to drive clear through the University of Maryland to get to the hospital. And he had a car by then, yeah. And um, I was home a lot, alone. And I know one day, this is not important, I probably shouldn't say that, but I thought I was going to faint. And I was in the house alone with Michael, and he was walking around by then. And I didn't know what he'd do if I fainted. And so I, I said, well, let's lay down on the floor. And I never did faint. I got down and I didn't faint. And he went right along with it. He laid down the floor. He thought it was a game. That was the thing to do. Well, evidently, but I still haven't fainted, I guess, until we lived here I had once. But anyway, um, then after that, I think that was about a year or two, then we got our first house, and that was in Chevy Chase. And it was our very own house. <laughs> and it had a basement, and we developed pictures in the basement. Chuck takes a lot of pictures. He's quite a photographer. And uh, we used the... Uh, things for the for the washing would you know the tubs the two tubs to do the, do the developing yeah we did the developing yeah mm -hmm. yeah and we still just had Michael well no I'll take that back that we got our first house and the people felt sorry for us because Ann was due and we moved in on on New Year's Eve and they probably wouldn't have let wouldn't have taken us at that time we didn't have much to move but I don't think they would have done it if I hadn't been pregnant I imagine they thought I better you better get this gal settled, but anyway, she was born at the National Naval Hospital. Okay, that's your daughter. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Ann Elizabeth. Oh, okay. Ann, A N N E. And then did you? Then what came next? Where well, we lived there two or three years because it was I think a three or four year um, assignment assignment in pathology, and uh, then he was sent to a hospital ship. Out he still country. was affiliated with the Navy? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. And he was sent out of the country on the Constellation. It's to, it made a new one, but it, they still have a Constellation. It's a wonderful ship. Now, oh, beautiful. We've seen the new one. <coughs> this is the older one. This is the old one. Yeah. yeah no, no, just um, no private rooms, you know. It was very different. But anyway, then the children and I moved here to Lafayette in a little house that they've torn down now when they widened that thing uh, near Fowler Street. Mm -hmm, when they mm -hmm. widened the street, they took that little house out. Some people by the name of Wood had lived there. Uh, Kat, she was in Purdue when I was, a year or two ahead, and her father was staff. And uh, it was a little house that had uh, two bedrooms up and one down, although we used it for a playroom. And it had a living room, dining room, kitchen. It was kind of a nice little house, really. Mm -hmm. And it was close. Not too far, <laughs> yeah. And, and I had the car then. He didn't need it. But um, I always wondered what I'd do if there was a fire, because it was stairs, you know. Two kids, well, it didn't have a fire, so I, somebody was thinking about me. But anyhow, we, we were there, and uh, 
he sent pictures, but on the ship he had grown a beard one time, and he sent pictures, and Anne was two, Michael was four, and uh, when Anne saw that picture, she said, that's not my daddy, and he did not come home with it. I never saw it on it, except the picture. I didn't like it either. <laughs> oh. That must have been, must have been um, strange for her, you know, daddy's here and then he's gone, and you know, but anyhow, then after that, or while we were there, uh, the ship came in to put a helicopter deck on to, to um, fly in patients. And so we, he was off three months, and he came home here first, and then we drove back to uh, Long Beach. Oh, that's where he was stationed in Long Beach? That's where he was, that's where the ship, ship came was. in. Yeah. Okay. And then we lived in a Quonset hut out there for the two other months. We had a ball, and he'd go in to report in the morning, and since he'd been home, all the fellows that stayed had been assigned duties, but they were all gone when he got back. So they, he'd go in and sign in, and then he was free. So we'd go to the beach every day. Mm. I had the best tan I've ever had in my life. <laughs> but anyhow, The children yeah. enjoyed it, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that was a concert hut. And uh, come on to my house. was playing on a jukebox down the hill at a little restaurant. And oh, we heard that with Rosemary Cooney till I thought I'd die. <laughs> and then after that, he went back to sea, and then he came home eventually when his time was up. And we lived, he, we went to Bluffton, Indiana, which is south of Portland. Mm -hmm. And that's where you stand, stayed most of your life then? No. Oh. We were there. He went to a Kaler Nickel Clinic there, which was very well known. Uh, made. What was his practice? What was his specialty? Pathology. Pathology is yeah. his specialty. Yeah. And uh, that was when you, your hospital was accredited according to the percentage of autopsies that you did. And it was really terrific because he was gone all the time. He did his regular work and then he'd do autopsies. You know, he was gone all the time. But anyhow, we lived there 14 years, 15 I guess maybe. And we built our first house there. It was a nice house, it was really very nice brick house. But the um, people that had started it were two brothers that had been trained at Mayo's. And it was very well run, and people came from all over for it. But it didn't end up being very fair financially. It got entwined with too much family. The, the, the two doctors, the brothers, had children that either married a doctor or, you know, it wasn't fair. And so he was working too many hours to have that be okay. So after 14 years, we left, and we went to um, Bluff, um, St. Joe, Michigan. <clears throat> we had a house right on Lake Michigan for 35 years before we moved here. Oh, very nice. Did, did he have his practice there, or was he affiliated with some organization in St. Joe? Well, he just was, he was part of the rotation. It had, it was very well run, very good. With the hospital situation? Okay. Yeah. Okay. He really was. Yeah. Where did your children go to uh, college? Did they any come to Purdue? No. Michael went to um, um, DePaul. He was drum major all four years. And he was on the swimming team, but our Michael's 5'8", he's not very long. And, uh, you know, when you pull your body length, the others were taller. So that didn't do too well. But they made him the manager, and he felt he learned quite a bit being the manager. Was when they'd travel, he'd make all the arrangements. Mm -hmm. So, But uh, we went all to the games and all. And then our aunt is dyslexic. They didn't know anything about it at that time. At least we didn't, and they didn't around Fort Wayne because we took her to reading specialists there. And uh, they said, don't don't worry with her, she's fine, she reads, she just doesn't read fast, which was true, really, I guess. But now they have more help. And my sister Kathy in Indianapolis was a teacher, but now she's been retired, but she teaches these children at her home, around her dining room table, one at a time. Nice. She has two sons, Mark and Paul, and Paul is dyslexic. And she's enough younger that they knew a little what to do. So she kind of worked it out with him partly, and then she has since learned. And she's helped a lot of kids, a lot of kids. She said she had one 10-year-old boy one time, that one day he just stood up like he was shocked almost, came around the table, put his arms around her, and kissed her, and he said, you have just made my life. I would have cried. <laughs> I would have too, yeah. I got right to the floor. <laughs> But she's helped a lot of kids that way. That's nice. She still does. What do, what do your two children do now? Or, or well, they? Anne's dyslexic. I said that. So she went to Intermont, which is a two-year girls' school in the East. All right. 
And after that, she took a summer job, a bunch of them did. I thought it would be wonderful for her. But she took a job, a summer job, on the out, outer islands, what do they call them, I'm not saying it right. Off the coast? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And she, she took care of babies sometimes, or just, you know, whatever they could get. And a lot of them did it. But she met this guy, and um, he was nice looking at that time, I guess. But anyhow, they, I don't know, it was, another, it was another year or two that passed. Anyhow, she married him, and it turned out he was an acute schizophrenic, and he was terrible to her. And he, you know, he said, if you leave, I'll kill you. And she believed him, and I think he would be able to. And uh, so that was disastrous. But anyway, she has never had children, thank God. And, uh, Are they still married? No, no. Finally, she left because he was terrible. She worked. She worked in a in store. Worked in a very nice ladies' shop in New Orleans when we visited once. Well, that's where they lived in New Orleans. Yeah, I hate that town. I really do for several reasons. Do you like it? I'm not a fan. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not a fan myself. No, I don't like it. I think it's strange. Mm -hmm. But no, that's where they lived. And finally, one day, she just took her purse and nothing else and went to work, and she didn't go home. And of course, he sold everything she had, which wasn't much, but it was her luggage and, you know, some sure. things. And finally, one day, she met him on the street, and she said she didn't know what he'd do. But he came right up to her, and he said, you were right to leave. I cannot handle marriage. But she stayed too long. Mm -hmm. It was it was bad. It hard, yeah. It really right. was, yeah. It, it really did damage. And then you, then you came back to Lafayette. Let me... Um, do you have a favorite Purdue tradition or an outstanding event? Hmm. Any tradition that comes to mind? Well, we go to ball games. Okay. Football and okay. girls basketball. Okay. Good. Okay. What about outstanding event? Well, we go to several events. I wouldn't okay. say all. I mean, of them. in your life, an outstanding event in your life that comes to mind. Oh my. Well, I often think of Ann Arbor. That's strange because I moved from there when I was about eight after my mother died. It was, I was probably nine. I was fifth grade anyway. And um, I, I, think, I think fondly of Ann Arbor because Ma was alive and it was, it was good. It was a nice time. Mm -hmm. You remember that. Yeah. yeah. In closing, any comments, closing remarks that you'd like to make that comes to mind? Well, I was not happy moving to the farm, and my sister wasn't either. It was so different. But on the other hand, it was really a good thing in my life because I had 4-H, and it really helped me. Right. I, I, Anne was, she's 6'2", our son's 5'10", I said. Too bad. And then Anne O'Chucks, it's not married. And she's not living, lovely person, really. But anyhow, she said one time in front of them, well, they sure got mixed up, meaning he should have been the tall one, you know. <laughs> I could have got killed her, but I didn't, of course. Anyway, um, Anne was tall, and everything that fit her was too old. I wouldn't let her wear them. And I loved to sew anyway. And I belonged to a, what they called fabric by mail. It was from New York. And they would send each month a thing like this, but it would have samples of different materials, and then tell about them how much they were a yard and all that. And I belonged to that for a lot of years. And I made all her clothes, and a lot of mine. I made coats, I made suits, a lot of things, and I liked to do it. And uh, I made a scrapbook of it. I don't know where the scrapbook is, but we have it. <laughs> oh. And, uh, and so you enjoyed being back in Lafayette? Yeah, really, we have been. Right. The people here are very nice. There are a lot of the retired teachers, professors, and they're Better interesting like people. They don't just sit around and gripe or think, you know, all of us have things that aren't so good anymore. But um, some of them really seriously. But they don't talk about that. We talk about more fun things. Right, and sharing experiences. Yeah. Right. And uh, they're nice people, and the food is excellent. Really, it is. Um, and the, uh, we have outside speakers come quite often on all different subjects. Right. And uh, musical groups sometimes. And uh, they clean the apartment once a week. And then once a year, you get what they call... Deep cleaning now. I don't remember that. If they've ever done it to us, we probably were gone. I would probably have it at that time if I could. But uh, they they do just a general kind sure. of once over, and we don't have a sweeper anymore. We gave our sweeper to Anne when we moved, so I hope she uses it. 
but uh, that you know you need it in a week. You really kind of feel you do, but they do, and they, they the one the girl that we have is does first floor during the whole week, right? And then there's one somebody different does second floor and so on, and it's really a nice place. Good. It is a nice. We're very happy. Good. I want to thank you very much, Mrs. Blinster. This has been very interesting, and you've shared a lot of experiences, and I've been very pleased to have the opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. Well, I hope you do. I hope it's of some value. Yes, very.